What if we want to go the other way or we have a probability or a percentage and we want to go backwards to a raw score? For example, the U.S. Census Bureau found the average commute time is 23.4 minutes with a standard deviation of 10 minutes. Suppose you want to figure out how long you have to drive to be considered in the top 10% of commuters. First off, let's consider what this is showing us. The top 10% are driving in the upper 10% or longer than most people. That means they're in the upper tail of the normal distribution. Recall that Excel only deals with the lower tail or less than. Well, the opposite of being in the upper 10% means that there are 90% below you or you're commuting longer than 90% of the population. This is the value we're going to use with Excel. So let's take a look at Excel. We know we have a formula that looks like this. We also know we have the mean 23.4 and the standard deviation of 10. That means since we're looking for the specific score or x value, in order to solve this, we need that z-score. It's a pivotal piece of information. Never fear, Excel can help. Let's go on over to Excel, insert a function, and we're going to use norm.s.dist. But we're going to use it backwards. So we're going to look for norm.s.inverse, I-N-V. All we need to do is enter the probability or the percentage, and it does need to be the value less than. So we need to enter the 0.9. That gives me a z-score of approximately 1.28. Recalling that we do round z-scores to two decimal places pretty universally. In order to solve, I am going to cross multiply or multiply 1.28 times 10. and that's equal to x minus 23.4. I'm then going to solve by multiplying by 10, 12.8, and lastly, adding 23.4 to both sides. That means if I'm interested in being in the top 10% of commuters or commuting longer than most of the population, I need to commute 23.4 plus 12.8, 36.2 minutes. Now you'll notice that Excel does provide an extended z-score. And if you use more than two decimal places, you will get a slight variation or a slightly different response, which is okay. It's just a function of rounding error. You can also use Excel to jump right to your solution. The only difference is that when you use norm.in, I-N-V, you do enter in the mean and standard deviation, but you're going to get a slightly different solution because Excel will carry all of those decimal places. So we're going to enter in our probability again to norm.in without the S. We know the mean and we know the standard deviation. Okay? It's not off by that much, but we do have slightly more decimal places due to the fact that Excel carried forward all of the decimal places in the z-score instead of cutting it at 2, which is fine. So you have a choice if you want to use norm.s.inv and solve for the z-value using the formula to solve for x, or if you want to jump right to norm.inv and fill in your mean and standard deviation, jumping right to your x value or solution.